All right, we'll start with a opening prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for these few minutes to study these words and learn more about ourselves and thereby being able to correctly strengthen our connection with you and understand you in all the different aspects that we would be able to. All harm free in the name of Jesus, amen. Okay, we're in the nature of personal reality. Uh, we are moving along. We are starting chapter 18 today. That's on page 347 of this edition, and it goes like this. Inner storms and outer storms. Creative destruction. The length of the day and the natural reach of a biologically based consciousness. Your reality exists independently of your physically oriented consciousness. But while you are a creature, your awareness must be interpreted through your neurological structure and your corporal aliveness. There are indeed various kinds of memory so that the right information can be at your fingertips when you need it. Other data will seldom be required consciously, yet it must always be available to unconscious portions of the self. Biologically, the reach and capacity of your physically oriented consciousness is directly connected with the length of your days and nights and of course with the seasons. Physically speaking, there are chemical interactions when thought occurs and memories ride on the chemical smooth flow. With the precise night and day schedule that it possesses, your planet would in those terms, give birth to a creature consciousness uniquely suited to fit it. In other terms, the night and day represent the innate rhythms of your consciousness physically materialized through natural phenomena, for you are not yet equipped to perceive longer duration days. Your nervous system would find great difficulty in a rhythm in which a day was stretched out to be three or four times as long, for instance. The rhythms of your body and of your consciousness follow the patterns of your planet. The planet itself is composed of atoms and molecules, each with their own kind of consciousness, however. And in the gestalt, and cumulative cooperative organization of their nature, the physical structure is formed out of consciousness. As this formation took place, there was constant give and take between interior and exterior realities in your terms. The growth of feelings, sensations, I amness, concepts, and beliefs was paralleled by the resulting exterior manifestations of animal species and mineral and vegetable emergences. With these came the growth of complementary neurological structures and the precise physical formations such as mountains, valleys, seas, and so forth needed to sustain them. In greater terms, all of these events occur simultaneously. To make this easier to understand, however, I am talking in terms of your time. Your feelings are as natural a part of the environment as trees are. They have a great effect upon the weather. There are even connections that can be made, for instance, between 
epilepsy and earthquakes where great energy and instability come together affecting the physical properties of the earth. Beliefs are the formations of self-conscious minds even as buildings are at another level. And this next sentence, I think, is probably one of the main ones of what we're reading here. Beliefs direct, generate, focus, and harness feelings. In this context, then, feelings are being compared to mountains, lakes, and rivers. Ideas and beliefs bring about those obviously man-made structures that imply self-conscious minds and the ocean of interrelated social events. Feelings are still dependent upon your neurological structure and its impact with physical reality. An animal feels, but it does not believe. Your feelings with their chemical interactions have, besides their subjective reality to you, electromagnetic properties, as indeed your thoughts have. But your bodies must rid themselves of chemical excesses in the same way that land must clear itself of excess water. There are what I am going to call here ghost chemicals, aspects of normal chemicals that you have not perceived so far, where certain thresholds are approached in which chemicals are changed into purely electromagnetic properties and energy released that directly affects the physical atmosphere. As your body is in a state of constant flux and in chemical interaction, so is the atmosphere, which reflects on another level all of the psychic, chemical, and electromagnetic properties that exist within the body. There is little difference between the currents of blood that flow through your veins and the wind current, except that the one seems to be within you and the other without. Both are manifestations of the same interrelationship in motion, however. Your planet has a body as much as you have. Your blood follows certain prescribed patterns and so does the wind. You are inside the body of the earth in those terms. As cells within your body influence it, so does your body affect the larger body of the earth. The weather faithfully reflects the feelings of the individuals in any given local territory. Overall weather patterns follow deeper inner rhythms of emotion. Those in earthquake regions are attracted to such spots because of their innate understanding of the astonishing relationship between exterior circumstances and their own quite private mental and emotional patterns. Here you can find individuals of great energy, of unstable, excessively temperamental natures, and with intense capacities for creativity and innovation. They need a strong stimulus or impact with reality against which to pit themselves, however. There is often a great impatience with social situations and unusual vitality. Such individuals operate at a high pitch and in mass emit inordinate excesses of what I have called ghost chemicals. Such emotional non-physical qualities are unstable and affect the deep electromagnetic integrity of the Earth's structure. Obviously there have been earthquakes where there are no people, but in all cases 
the origins are to be found in mental properties rather than exterior ones. Earthquakes are very often associated with periods of great social change or unrest, and from such locations the fault lines originate and are projected outward. They may then affect a generally unpopulated area or another continent or an island or cause a tidal wave on the other side of the world, even as a stroke might affect a portion of the body far from the original damage. You do not need a self-conscious mind to feel. And in the past, Earthquakes represented the feeling patterns of species in the same way. Unstable conditions of consciousness that in themselves initiated natural phenomena, further altering the state of consciousness and the conditions of the species as well. In your terms, consciousness is wedded with matter and any of its experiences are physically materialized through that interaction. There are great correlations between thunderstorms and psychic storms, for example, and between unstable electromagnetic properties of both feeling and thought, the brain's ability to handle these, and its need to rid itself of excesses. You do not simply react to the weather, you help form it, even as you breathe the air and then send it outward again. The brain is a nest of electromagnetic relationships that you do not understand. In certain terms, it is a controlled storm. From it springs ideas that are quite as natural as lightning. When lightning strikes the earth, it changes it. There are also changes that come about through the impact of your thoughts upon the atmosphere. The great overall inner trust with which you were born forms the basis for the encompassing reliability of the physical earth. Your body dwells in the earth as you dwell in your body. You were born with a faith in your existence that automatically directed the proper functioning of your personal corporal self. This provided the necessary stabilizing properties upon which your consciousness could play and through which it could effectively and creatively operate. The smallest atom has its own kind of built-in integrity upon which all of its organizations and alterations are based. So generally, there is a gestalt kind of permanence within the body of the earth. Yet, with all of this, there is always change. As with the experience of time in a linear fashion, any event must knock out another one. In terms of your focus, a given occurrence takes time. You know that many events occur that you do not consciously perceive, but take on the word of others. In your terms, therefore, change is apparent. The body is altered. I told you that a dis ease can have a creative basis, and so can an earthquake or a natural disaster. On other than conscious levels, simply as creatures, you are well aware of impending storms, floods, tornadoes, earthquakes, and so forth. There are many hints and signs picked up by the body itself alterations in air pressure, magnetic orientation in terms of balance, minute electrical differentiations of which the skin itself is aware. On that level, the body is often prepared for natural calamities before they occur. Defenses are set up. 
many additional issues operate, however, that have to do with any given personal reaction. Here, other psychological conditions enter in. People live in regions threatened by earthquakes with clear conscious knowledge of them. Regardless of what they might say, they need and enjoy the constant stimuli and excitement. The very unpredictable nature of the circumstances arouses them to action. There are many different attitudes and characteristics that apply so that it is difficult to make generalizations, but there are always reasons why any individual is involved in a disastrous natural catastrophe. In many cases, a near conscious realization of the circumstances occurs beforehand. In other cases, the body's foreknowledge is reflected in dreams and so alters daily life that an escape takes place. Some people change their plans and leave town a day before a disaster comes about. Others stay. None of this is accidental. Unconscious material is admitted into consciousness according to those beliefs an individual holds about himself, his reality, and his place in it. No one dies in a disaster who has not chosen to do so. There is always some conscious recognition, however, though the individual may play tricks with himself and pretend it is not there. Even animals sense they're dying ahead of time, and on that level, man is no different. Those who want to use their unconscious precognition of such an event will take advantage of it, save themselves, and choose not to be involved. If they do not believe in such advance warnings and deny themselves conscious knowledge, yet still believe in their overall security, they will unconsciously act without knowledge of their reasons. There will be others who are a part of the calamity for their own reasons. Psychically, mentally, and physically, they will be as much a part of the, such an event as, say, the water, that sweeps through a town in a flood. They will utilize the physical catastrophe as an individual might use a symptom for purposes of a challenge or growth or understanding, but they will choose their disaster just as they will choose their symptoms. They will be aware of the framework, therefore. It will not be thrust upon them. They may not consciously accept such information, but if they knew how to examine themselves, they would discover that their beliefs added up to precisely the given kind of situation. An illness of a severe nature may be used by an individual to put him or her into the most intimate contact with the powers of life and death, to initiate a crisis in order to mobilize buried survival instincts to vividly portray great points of contrast and summon all of his or her strength. So can a catastrophe be used consciously or unconsciously according to the individual. And we'll end there. That's the end of session 664. Well, of course, a lot of this material is connecting our body and what goes on inside our body to the earth and our earth and what goes on on and in the earth. And basically, he's trying to make this comparison that 
as what is going on in our body and affected by our thoughts and beliefs and feelings, so as what's going on on the earth is affected by our thoughts, beliefs, and feelings. He makes numerous comparisons to try to help us understand this connection. And the main reason he's doing this is because he wants us to understand this concept. We are of nature. Okay? We're not against nature. We're not apart from nature. We are of nature. We are with nature. And you can eventually get to the point where you say we are nature. Now going back to the second to last paragraph on page 348, that first sentence is one that I had emphasized during the reading and it says beliefs direct, generate, focus, and harness feelings. Now, even though a lot has been covered over the last few pages, it's necessary that we emphasize this sentence so that there's no misunderstanding of Seth's point of view. He makes it clear that this is the method that works. There's a, shall we say, ongoing argument that feelings are the ones that, shall we say, create beliefs. And the logic, shall we say, is that feelings existed a long time before language and beliefs, so therefore that is the way it had to be. Um, my answer to that is I'm going to go here and go along with what Seth is saying. I have gotten so I trust this material and by choosing to understand that beliefs are the ones that direct feelings, beliefs are the ones that generate feelings, beliefs are the ones that focus feelings, beliefs harness feelings. If we learn that as the major understanding of what's going on, it's helpful because it gives us a chance to actually gain some understanding of what's occurring in our daily life and to change it. We change it by changing our beliefs. Plus, you can do an experiment. You change your belief and all you have to do is wait and see does it, your feelings change associated with it. And the answer is yes. You'll find this to be true if you're honest on how you are experimenting. So today's statement will be beliefs direct, generate, focus, and harness feelings. And I believe right now it is September 4th. All right. And to repeat, we shall say beliefs direct, generate, focus, and harness feelings. Of a closing prayer. Thank you, Lord, for giving us this information. May these new concepts open up our thinking, our dreams, our feelings, sensations, thoughts, beliefs, so that we can see the world in a bigger light, in a different picture, a greater understanding, and also to realize the mystery of the world is always before us 
right here for us to experience. May we understand all of this and share it with those in our hearts and minds harm-free. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen.